Here with us now, North Carolina Republican Congressman and Dr. Craig Murphy. Doctor, Congressman, welcome back to the show. Good morning. Let's start with last night. The former president, he didn't mince words, as Libby Dean reported. He had some harsh commentary at a time when political violence, as you know, was at an all-time high. Is this the right messaging? He called the former president feeble and stupid. He called Kamala Harris crazy. What's the strategy here? You know, Hannah, uh, what happened uh, with his uh, speech at the convention, I think, was a real grand moment, uh, really, during his real tenure in politics. You know, I, I personally am not into uh, that type of rhetoric, and I don't know what how good that really uh, resounds with the American people. Sadly enough, it's going to be on both sides. You know, Biden does the same thing, calling Trump a threat to democracy. There is a call, and I think a bipartisan call, to lower the temperature. Um, but, uh, you know, as was mentioned, Trump is getting back to himself, and uh, he is who he is. So, <laughs> Let's talk policy. Vance followed in Trump's footsteps. He took aim at Vice President Harris. He criticized her yeah. for doing little. That's a bipartisan. A lot of people have criticized the vice president for doing very little in the last four years. But what is your thoughts yeah. on Trump's VP pick and, of course, his messaging? You know, I think if you look at him person, you look at his story, it was a great pick. It was really a great pick. Um, you know, uh, J.D. Vance came from dire, dire circumstances. And, you know, everybody's now looking at Hillbilly Elegy uh, to see really where he came from. And then he, he decided, yes, I'm going to take a path outward. He served our nation in the Marines, um, was, uh, was a law school graduate and did very, very well. He is the embodiment, really, of the American uh, story. And so, no, I think it resounds with so many different people, and I, I think he was an excellent pick amongst a, a, a large group of really good, good people from which uh, the president had to pick. I'm with you here, Congressman. I think his story is incredible, but is he ready to be vice president? Well, you know, that's always a question. Are you ready to be president? Are you ready to be vice president? Yes, he is 39 years old. I mean, John F. Kennedy uh, was in a similar uh, predicament. Uh, I think uh, he has the tools, and that's really the most important thing. Experience comes, but do you have the tools of discernment, of being able to put good people around you to understand what circumstances are and how to react and how best to advise the president? Yeah, I think he's, uh, I think he's uh, uh, you know, a little bit raw in that regards, as any 39-year-old would be. But I think he was an excellent choice uh, by President Trump. And there's no doubt he has a long political career ahead of him. Congressman, yeah. you're on the border caucus. It's clear that immigration is key for Trump. A lot of Americans, Absolutely. you know, one of their first priorities. Border numbers, I want to mention, they've dropped with Biden's new border crackdown. It dropped by 40,000 last month. We, had a, we have some numbers up for our viewers. Does this hurt the Republican narrative moving forward going into November? Not at all, Hannah, not at all, because this was all done in response to a, a political uh, movement that they this was the number one issue. Look, they opened the border three and a half years ago. Uh, people do not trust them. If uh, Biden were to be reelected, re which he's not going to be, if he were to be reelected, that they'd open it right back up again. This is uh, smoke and mirrors, and this is not fooling the American people, not one bit whatsoever. Well, we can agree numbers have gone down. Oh, absolutely, sure. Yeah, and this is the this is the result of policies. Um, but, but the policies that uh, Biden came in and ninety four executive orders, literally within the first few days, the, the the numbers skyrocketed. So now he's going back to the Trump policies, which kept the numbers down. So yeah, they it's great right now. It's it's improved right now. But I don't trust them whatsoever. If God forbid they were to be reelected in January to open up the can all over again. That's something we'll keep an eye on. Let's shift gears here, Congressman. The Secret Service admits now it turned down requests for additional resources yeah. for Trump for years now that led up to the attempted assassination. Unfortunately, we saw last week Secret Service denying it. What's your reaction on the eve of the Secret Service director testifying before the House Oversight right. Committee tomorrow? Well, Hannah, this was an absolute debacle. And if, God forbid, the president had been killed on live television, um, this nation, good Lord, you know the... Uh, the conspiracy theories that would have been going on. I think this goes from the top. I, I think the uh, director is going to be forced to resign. I mean, she made some nonsense comments about the slope of the roof being too steep. Uh, look, when you're there to protect, um, <clears throat> and, you know, former President Obama and, you know, Clinton, they all get Secret Service. But when a guy is out campaigning for office, you turn down a request for extra protection, this is going to come back to bite them. And I think it's going to show that they were uh, negligent in their duty on, uh, on the night of the, uh, of the rally. 
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.